A lot of images of like uh, death too. Like right over here, you got these. Looks like a hospital room with a bunch of bunch of uh, green skull-headed people. Yeah, they're trying to get us so the glare doesn't show. Uh, yeah, I can hit the light off. Then. Um, I, I might. Okay, that might be a good idea. Just, uh, Let's see how it looks. Oh, better. Yeah. Okay, we can see it now. Oh, good. Um, yeah. That that one is actually called Poor and Forgotten. What is it? Poor, poor and Forgotten? Yeah, poor and Forgotten. My, my outlook on the American healthcare and the system that we had. Uh, I haven't seen Michael uh, Moore's new movie out. Sicko. I'm excited to look at it and check it out. Though. Very timely, huh? Yeah. I mean, th this painting would be very timely right now. For only 300 bucks. No, That's that one is 700. Oh, 700, okay. But Grandma Go Getter. Oh, I see yeah. now. Up, up there yeah. it says 700, okay. So, Grandma Go Getter. And there are all, they're all original paintings. Oh, um, there's a four eyed uh, uh, Mona Lisa. The Mona Lisa, yeah, for an upcoming show, it might believe me in Berlin. Um, I'm wondering if that show bids on Mona Lisa. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty cool. Boy, that, that, that really does give the illusion that you're, you're seeing funny things because it's such a recognizable image, the Mona Lisa, and then with her having four eyes, you're kind of wondering if maybe you're. You're having trouble with, uh, you know, your your sight or something. Could you look at it and you go, wait, she just have to, you know, it's just it kind of really plays a trick on you. And yeah. then right here, you got this is a really creepy picture. Looks like it belongs in the uh, the haunted mansion or something. <laughs> yeah. 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 What's the title of this one? Uh, Moan and Lisa. Moan and Lisa. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Guy's got his little uh, martini glass of absinthe. green green absinthe in there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Cool stuff. How long does it take for you to do one of these? Do you price them according to how many hours it takes for you to, to take do, them? Or? Yeah, yeah, actually. Um, and some of them depend on, on whether I build in a print and the prints become really popular. It's, mm -hmm. uh, it's just worth it to me to increase the value of the, uh, the painting. You know, so where, where, do you, where do you print and how do you price the prints? Um, I print them right now. I don't go for the traditional clays. Um, but I, permit, I get them uh, commercial offset printing, uh, much like they do the flyers, and I like to do polyurethane over it to try to give it a, a nice edge, and then I hand sign them. So, but whenever I do do a print, it's just very personal because you know I want it to have that, um, you know, that, that aspect. I don't want it to be all generic and whatnot. You know. So you'll you'll do a limited run of prints, and then that'll be it. You won't do a second one. Yeah. Okay. Well, good. Uh, is there any any particular uh, style or, or piece that you'd like to you'd like to highlight and maybe uh, do a little a little history of for us? This one looks um, interesting. This is a good piece, actually. This is uh, uh, the original piece was inspired by Van Gogh's uh, the paper, uh, Van Gogh. Uh, Van Gogh. Potato eaters. Okay. And uh, I made obviously some changes with it and it's turned into the eyeball eaters. And oh, you know, the, the appearance with the angles, I wanted to have a skeleton really looking into the painting as creating a painting. Um, I, I, I grew up in Holland, and uh, it was a field trip with a, a school that uh, I went and saw the, the Van Gogh uh, Museum, and uh, that piece stuck out in my childhood. Like, in a lot of ways, I think that, that painting almost created me as a painter or gave me that insight. Uh, when I was very young. So. so in your formative years in Holland where you were growing up you saw the Van Gogh painting the potato eaters and, and that was that was uh, that impressed you on such a level that it spurred you to become a painter and it, 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 well it made me definitely think of when I was very young that that's something that I really was what I wanted to do and what about that, into that what about the painting the potato eaters was impressive to you was it the style, the technique of the painting itself, or something about its content? It was the feelings. Um, I, when I was, you know, I was a lot younger when I saw it, so like, like looking back now at the history with the famine in, in Ireland with, with the potatoes and the way they relied on that, it's a really sad painting of absolute poverty. And, uh, you know, Come a little closer. Yeah, looking back now, at that time, it wasn't cool to do paintings of, of, of poverty because, you know, rich people didn't want to have poor people on their walls. And uh, I'm not necessarily fond of Van Gogh's later paintings or Story Night or, or, or anything like that, but it, it's more of a more in-depth pieces that really got to me. Hmm. The fact that he's willing to do stuff that 
not necessarily was socially acceptable, but he still did it. But he what? He still did it? He still did it. You know? And a lot of ways that, that kind of gives me a feeling of rebellious edge within my own work, with, with a lot of the work here, is, you know, for the, the traditional, you know, a lot of it's outsider, and I can't imagine the whole world would want this stuff on their walls. But there's always a few, you know. And at the time, and at the time, that was the case with the potato eaters. 